Synchro 2018 has just received a new update, so why not take this opportunity to go over some of the cool features of 2018 that you might have missed out on. First up, and as in past releases, there are significant improvements in speed and performance. This allows you to have a better experience when managing large and complex projects. There are also some changes to the user interface, with more tabs replacing the older collapsible title sections, which removes the need for excessive up and down scrolling to look for that feature or information you need. What I really like about this is that for links, for example, the layout for predecessors and successors changes slightly based on whether you place the tab horizontally or vertically in your UI. Also, because of this concept of tabs, task and 3D filters have become much more intuitive. You can simply check the boxes of what you want to filter by, and a new tab will be added where you can specify the details for each parameter. For 3D filters in particular, there are new buttons to quickly activate in the selected 3D view or in all of the 3D views, and my personal favorite, you now have the ability to load or unload filtered or unfiltered objects from your memory directly from the filters list. This is extremely valuable for performance when you are working on different scopes of large and complex models. And yet another improvement added to Synchro's filtering capabilities, you can now click on any cell value in any table, like the Gantt chart, the resources table, the 3D objects table, and filter the rows of that table by that specific value in that cell. Color modes in the 3D views are now more separated, so in addition to being able to toggle between appearance profile colors and resource status colors, new options are added, including 3D filter colors which are now separated from appearance profiles, so you can color your models by different parameters without having any conflict with profile colors. Another good example is coloring the model as well as the Gantt activity bars by activity code colors regardless of whether you're grouping the schedule by WBS or activity code. Speaking of colors in the 3D views, you can now edit the legend properties for every specific view separately, and even set the title and sorting using the new legend tab in 3D view properties. Some pretty cool improvements to data visualization were added in 2018, including the ability to toggle between incremental and cumulative graphs for any quantitative parameter in your model, or plot both at the same time with different scales. Also, the ability to use conditional formatting to color the cells in a column according to their values in any table, and the ability to change the grouping in the resources table from tree or list mode to grouping by your custom resource codes. When drafting a big picture schedule or sequence, you can now easily draw your schedule and links directly in the Gantt chart and then fine tune once the discussions get started. This feature is pretty handy when you need to come up with some really quick prototypes in a meeting. Auto matching capabilities were expanded to include 3D user fields, resource codes as well as nested values for activity and resource codes and you can now use it to auto-match resource groups to tasks as well. And if you've started using the Synchro API, you can now interact with the data model in the form of an SQL database and quite easily integrate with business intelligence tools such as Power BI. The Synchro iRay plugin now includes a built-in denoiser that uses deep learning to predict how a high quality render will look like based on only a fraction of the number of render samples or iterations. For example, this is a 300 sample render that takes about 10 minutes on a standard BIM laptop to generate, without the denoiser. And this is an 8 sample render that literally takes less than a minute to generate and uses the denoiser. We can see that the two images look very similar, although one took less than tenth of the time to generate. 
Another feature added to iRay is the ability to assign and change different materials from a regular shaded view and have it dynamically update in the iRay view. This is a pretty cool way to experiment with different iRay materials while setting up your render. In addition, Synchro now allows you to add iRay light sources for those poorly lit indoor renders. And if you're not using iRay, you still get some rendering improvements as the ambient occlusion option now has a new algorithm that delivers a higher quality effect, with new controls available in the settings that you can tweak. Combining this effect with shadows and lighting can produce a really nice high quality effect without having to go to photorealism. Finally, in addition to Synchro's iPad and HoloLens Mobile 4D status tracking applications, Synchro now includes direct streaming to HoloLens with a new XR Review app that lets you manipulate and slice through models as well as review key parameters.